Good morning and good afternoon, depending upon uh, where you're tuning in from uh, today. Um, my name is uh, Sean with RSA Solutions, and I'll be uh, kind of your tour guide uh, today during the webcast. Uh, Want to give um, just a um, little bit of instruction before we get started today, so you kind of have an idea of what's going on. Um, first of all, you might have noticed that your phone or your mic has been automatically muted during the webcast. First of all, please know that that's not because we don't want your feedback. Instead, the opposite. However, with a mass number of people possibly talking over each other, it could be um, like... Uh, listening to um, a, a complex interview with multi-people today that uh, I can't hear or concentrate when those things happen. So just know that you've been muted. However, we do have a questions section of the webcast. So if you'll notice, uh, you might uh, look at your webcast docking station and notice that there is a question section. So please feel free if you've got a question or a comment uh, to be able to use that. And when we see new questions coming in, we'll pause the presentation and uh, try to get you the best answers that we can. Um, this is not a sales presentation. Um, this is for educational purposes. Uh, today's webcast I'm really excited about. Um, not only will we learn some pretty um, innovative ways to be able to improve manufacturing, and the execution of it, we're also going to have a special guest uh, that's going to uh, share with us his very experience of selecting, implementing a uh, production coach. So I believe that uh, often uh, customers prefer to hear from real live users uh, versus sales or technical people. So we get kind of uh, all of those good things today. So I want to thank you, first of all, for taking your time. Uh, to join us today, and I'll do my very best to guide us along so that we can learn some things real quick and then hear uh, from Mr. Brian Boggs of Pacific Crest that I'll introduce a little bit uh, a little bit of time from now. So what I want us to first start with is to understand what we're going to cover today. Um, I think that sometimes in past webcasts, we have just gotten started and there was so much information coming so quickly that um, people or participants may not have fully uh, comprehended because they didn't know what was coming. So today we're going to talk about challenges that companies in 2021 are facing today and how Production Coach can help overcome some of those. We're going to talk about how we can automate our factories, that we can make them digitalized and modern and do some really, really amazing things, but doing it in very simple ways that's easy to implement. We'll also talk about how it's possible to increase throughput without additional labor. If you're a fan of the book, The Goal, and you um, begin to understand these principles of adding additional throughput without um, additional labor, um, it can be um, monumental to your bottom line. We're going to talk about how to improve communications between the shop, the office, and even all the way to the job site. We'll talk about how to automate things like sorting and assembly in just very, very amazing ways. I always find it interesting that companies often spend lots of money to automate their panel processing or their finishing area, but often don't invest in assembly automation, and this will uh, definitely give you some great things to think about in that area. We're also going to make sure before you leave here that you understand how you can now ship 100% accurate 100% of the time. Of the things that I interview in our industry that companies struggle with is getting shipments um, out on time and accurate. Uh, it's very, very costly when we discover uh, problems or missing things at the job site. We're going to talk about how it's possible to track work orders in real time. And then finally, what I'm most uh, most excited about is uh, what we call a customer success story or a hero's journey 
we're going to hear from Mr. Brian Boggs of Pacific Crest and learn how a production coach um, became a vital part of their manufacturing process. So I want to talk about challenges for just a moment. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm tired of hearing about COVID. I'm tired of uh, hearing about inflation. I'm tired of hearing about a lot of things for sure um, for this last year, or maybe we want to call it uh, um, almost two years coming up, or at least a, a year and a half. Um, our industry and the world itself has been facing some pretty interesting challenges. And so I just want to review a few of those today and kind of help you understand uh, some ways that Production Coach can make a big impact for you. First of all, um, lots of companies are super busy wearing way too many hats and working way too hard, way too long. And so if that's you, just know that one of the things that we have done with Production Coach is minimize what it takes to make this investment work for you. As a matter of fact, you can get returns incredibly fast without having to go through what I would think of in a normal software implementation process of a huge amount of investment up front to make it work. Uh, we've done that in a few ways. Number one, we've created a new customer bundle that was a perfect recipe for getting companies doing really amazing things really quick. And we've also provided or created links to the main industry um, engineering or design software. So that means we can harness the work that you already have. So that's uh, pretty exciting. One thing I want to say about Too Busy is I'm often asked, who are my biggest competitors? And I always say, hey, companies that are either too busy or companies that are too slow. The ones that are too busy are too busy working in their business to be working on their business. And of course, companies that are too slow are concerned about cash flow and what the future might hold. Employee challenges, um, for sure, I would be surprised if there's anybody on this webcast that is not struggling in some way, um, either finding uh, qualified employees, finding people who will show up for work, and maybe even uh, dealing with a new generation of a uh, worker. Um, you know, we've got to realize that many of the people that would be hired today grew up with technologies in their hands. It's natural to them. Uh, putting them in a shop kind of environment that is uh, not super high tech, high touch um, might not be the easiest way to track, but we can help in some very great ways to modernize, to digitize the factory in such a way that it doesn't seem like uh, that it's just about making sawdust. It actually is, is very, very intuitive. So I believe that we can help in those areas. Um, shipping errors, we, we mentioned that when I surveyed this industry, the percentage of companies that admit to significant shipping errors on a regular basis, and I'm not just talking about missing boxes, but it might be hardware bags, molding bundles, whatever it is that needs to be part of the shipment. I was uh, at a conference one time and a wise man, friend of mine, made a presentation. And the first thing that he did was put a dollar sign on a whiteboard. And he said, folks, this is what it costs when there's an error discovered in estimation. And below that, he wrote two dollar signs. And he says, people, please understand, this is the cost if the error is discovered in engineering. He put three dollar signs and he said, believe it or not, this is what it costs when you discover an error in manufacturing. And he then made several dollar signs below that and said, friends, this is what it costs when the error is detected at the customer site. And I believe that that's a very true thing. So we're going to learn how to eliminate those things from our business. Inflation, my word. Um, I, I'm fairly active in social media. And uh, not only is it inflation, but it's also scarcities of materials. I see people all the time begging for or can they get fasteners or boards or whatever it is? And so we definitely have some outside forces that are um, affecting us, that, that are causing our profits to um, be less, that are causing concern. And so while we can't directly affect inflation or availability of materials, what we can do is invest in our business and we can make our businesses more profitable. If we can increase throughput, 
if we can improve communications, if we can eliminate errors, then we can run a more profitable business that can withstand some of these outside forces. Also, deadlines. Um, man, I tell you, I, I sometimes feel bad um, for what some of our customers go through with unrealistic, crazy deadlines that are causing everyone to be stressed, and in some cases, burned out. I know that uh, sometimes um, I'll have even great customers that I don't hear from for quite a while that, that literally are thinking that they are too buried to even raise their head up to be doing anything else. And so while Production Coach does not change those deadlines, what it can do is streamline your manufacturing process to help you be able to get work orders through the factory more efficiently, quicker, and to be in full control and understand where everything is at all times. And so that's just a, a little um, helps um, for it. And for sure, the final one I believe here is the communication. Um, man, alive. I don't know that there's an organization that exists that couldn't benefit by improved communications. Um, that's exactly what Production Coach is doing, is helping communicate more effectively um, from the office to the factory and between stations in the factory, and then um, just literally making it easy so that everybody knows exactly what to do and how to do it. So that's uh, very powerful. So here I want to talk just a moment about mistakes. Well, we can't avoid, in all cases, mistakes, and we certainly want to be able to know where they're coming from. We want to be able to utilize big data over time to help us analyze. Maybe we discover that um, a large percentage is coming from edge vanning. Maybe that uh, tells us when we run big data reporting that Maybe we need to fine tune our edge bander or bring in uh, some employee training or some kind of a way to do that. But also just dealing with the factory disruption of when we do have what I'm gonna think of as damage or making things in air production coach manages in an amazing way damaged parts and allows us to, to take those circumstances, which might only be one or 2% of lots and lots of parts that we're producing, but it's still, can cause disruptions in manufacturing and delays in shipments. And so Production Coach can definitely help us in those ways. So today, I just want to take a couple of moments to talk to us, talk to everybody about what is intelligent data management. And so here's the easiest way I can describe it. You're probably utilizing barcode to some degree. And if you're not, you've probably been thinking about doing that. We're able to use your existing part labels, your existing barcode to help you accomplish a number of things in your factory in some really, really amazing ways. Sorry, my, there we go. So here is just an example of a part label. Um, this just happens to be a customer label that we acquired. Yours may look completely different, but for those of you who are not familiar with part labels, they can contain a, uh, a nice amount of information. The larger you make them, of course, the more information that can be contained. One of the things about Production Coach is that it can give us all of that information that's not necessarily even displayed on the label. And here we have a unique ID or a barcode for this thing. So what is this object? The part happens to be a full height door that has a certain size and material from a job that is tied to a product and has a quantity, and we not only know the materials, but also which edges to ban just from the part label. So here are some examples of part label scanning functions that you can do with Production Coach. So let's just think about these. So I could scan a part barcode and I could view the part size and material information that could be on the label or not, or maybe a nice big display to be able to see it. You can view the machining details of the part, make sure that it's being machined uh, correctly. Believe it or not, I've had companies that have said, man, I'd have bought production just for that one thing. Scan and be able to see exactly what machining is supposed to have been done on the part. You can scan a part label and also change the status of the part. Maybe it makes sense in your factory that you want to scan a part barcode 
and to be able to know that it's been accomplished at a particular station. Let's call it, for example, first operation, panel saw or CNC or panel processing, whatever we want to do. We can know literally down to a part level what has been completed. You can scan a part label and automatically create a damaged part alert and even give it a reason for it. And those reasons can be predetermined by you so that when we're utilizing big data to maybe analyze over time, where is our leading causes of damaged parts, we have the information. You can scan a part label and see the product related information. Sometimes I might not only want to know about the part, but I want to know about other parts that are associated with it in a subassembly or an assembly. I can scan a part label and generate a product label. When I'm at the point to where multi-parts are gonna come together and to make an object, let's call it a cabinet, a fixture or whatever, it can even generate then a product label so that we have a unique ID now for the assembly. I could scan a part label and I could include it in a kit. For example, many of my customers don't assemble adjustable shelves. So maybe right off of edge banding, they are scanning the barcode and when it's an adjustable shelf, it's telling the system to, uh, or telling the person to put that part on a, a pallet. And then when it's completed, all the parts of the pallet, then it's able to uh, be included in a kit and to generate a label for it. You can scan a part label and you can sort parts by cabinet. This is an amazing uh, feature of the software instead of manually sorting through parts. Let me just give you a quick example. It's common for our customers to batch 30 to 40 cabinets in a work order. If we said the average was 10 parts per cabinet for simple math, and we use the median, that's 350 parts that are flowing through manufacturing at any given time. Now, we know that uh, if we're going to assemble, that we need to get the right two side panels, the right bottom shelf, the right whatever kind of part. So Production Coach makes it so easy that you can just scan all 350 parts and it will have organized all of them by product and let you know if there are any parts missing from any bins so that assembly never begins to build something that's missing a part. You can scan a part label and you can group by part name by or a part type, by a material or by a work order. Let me give you an example. Some of our customers might batch work orders at first operation like sign but then want to run the work orders then individually from that point on. So we could do that by work order. Maybe I want to um, group so that edge banding is getting all of the parts organized by edge material or even by type. And so lots of features with grouping as well. I could scan a part barcode and update the status of all the parts in the nest. Um, this is just a quick example of a product label um, example. I can have more information, whatever uh, that we got from your CAD CAM systems, but I just want you to be aware here, it can also have a unique ID. So what could we uh, possibly do with that? We'll cover in just a moment, but I wanna show you just an example of a couple of additional, uh, what we might think of as kit labels for grouping management that might either be due to loose items or maybe even uh, for some companies, they're even palletizing products after assembly. So. Let's just cover this. So here are some functions that we could do. We could update the status of all parts in the nest. We could change the status of a product. Maybe we want to indicate it's been assembled or final assembly or staged or shipped or whatever. It could be included in a kit um, and then generate, of course, the label for the pallet itself. We could create a damaged product alert. We could stage it into a warehouse location. We could load it onto the truck. And we could, of course, change the status of the kit or load it onto the truck. We can also do something really amazing where we may not even have uh, barcodes for either parts, kits, or assemblies that we can auto-generate a work order with a barcode to let us know that an operation has started and that an operation has finished. So where are some areas that that might happen? Well, it might be a finishing where we couldn't have a barcode if we're not using RFID or maybe it's in a custom area where somebody's building a complex range hood or a die wall or those kind of things where there may not be. So we can still help you with the tracking and organization of your factory. So before I introduce Brian, 
I just want to give you, this comes from our website at rsasolutions.com, and it's very easy to find under Production Coach. This is what we refer to our 3D factory. And I just want to step you through a little bit about um, what this is intending to display. So you'll notice that there are some numbers above various areas in this very simple factory. And so one is to depict the office. So there is always at least one station in the office. And so what is happening in the office? Well, I'm importing a work order that was created from my CAD CAM. Maybe I'm attaching electronic documents if I want those to be able to be displayed on demand in the factory. Maybe I'm going to create the actual shipping tickets for what I want to go onto the truck. And there can be a number of other additional things that you could possibly do in the factory. Just know that number one is a vital part of what we do. I also want to uh, take a deep breath for a moment and let you know that one of the things that we've put together in the recipe of helping companies do amazing things quickly is putting together a new customer bundle of Production Coach. And it happens to include the installation and all the services and all the support and all that kind of stuff for five computers in your company. So one of those is used up in the office. So now we have four more to think about. And so I'm going to describe some potential areas where you might want to utilize those four additional stations. Now, please do understand that while this is the perfect recipe for getting started, at any time after initial implementation, you can add more stations. I, I think Brian will probably reference uh, the fact that they're running roughly 45 um, licenses of a production coach at Pacific Crest. But think about this, four more on the floor. Where do those go? Number two is intended to detect first operation. Here it's showing a little nesting machine, but it could be panel saw or combination between nesting and sawing, whatever. So that for many companies, they want to know when a work order has started in production and when it's complete at first operation. Number three on our chart also is intended to show you that you do not have to have production coach at every single station. For some of our customers, they're not scanning at operations like edge banding or horizontal boring. You get to decide where you get the most value from doing these scans to accomplish the functions that we talked about. Four is typically a very important one for many companies, most companies probably I should say. This is where production coach is used to sort all of these parts that are coming through panel processing into a grouping that is by product or by assembly, um, whatever you might call it, by cabinet, by fixture, by whatever you want to refer to it. So it's a very powerful station. By the way, um, some companies even do uh, more than one sorting. They either do it in the same area, same computer, in different areas. Some customers might sort case parts separately than they do fronts and drawers. Or I have customers that also sort uh, things like toe base assemblies or drawers, you know, whatever it is that you want to do. And here's an amazing thing. When we get to number five, this is the 3D assembly, and this even allows for synchronized sorting. So let me give you an example of that. Let's say that you had sorted all of the parts for a cabinet and so assembly says, yep, I'm ready to build that. Well, we could actually hide the fact that all of the parts were there until also their fronts and drawers were assembled. So we call that synchronized uh, sorting, and we give you an amazing way uh, to be able to do assembly. So no more starting to build something <coughs> and then having to go hunt for missing parts. Excuse me for a moment. Not only do we provide a 3D graphical interactive uh, image of what's being built? It is interactive that whatever part you might touch, it displays on the screen. You get to see all the parts, all the assemblies, all the hardware. Um, it can even um, you know, provide uh, instruction for you. And so it's really, really powerful to be able to use to automate assembly. Six is meant to depict staging. For many of our customers, they don't have the luxury of going directly from assembly onto the truck. And so Production Coach can give you some very amazing ways to be grouping things together that are going to be part of a shipment. 
that can be coming not only from boxes, that could be coming from, you know, molding bundles, hardware bags, whatever kind of things, to know that everything has been put together in a collection that has been staged and then ready for assembly, or excuse me, ready for shipping. Seven is one of the most important also. This is where we are scanning onto the truck, which could be parts, could be products, could be uh, kits, um, pallets, whatever you might want to call those things, so that we never close the truck door without being 100% sure that everything has been scanned. It also prevents you from scanning things that are not part of the work order, and it is really, really powerful. I've had customers tell me before, magically, after implementing Production Coach, our phone stopped ringing uh, from calls from the job site about stuff being missing. Guess what? We even include on the documentation the date and timestamp that it was scanned onto the truck so you can have additional verification. And number eight, I just want to mention briefly, this is is done after a new customer bundle, but we can even extend production coach out to the job site where you could be tracking deliveries and installs and being able to communicate uh, uh, damaged parts. You could take pictures from job sites, just a nice range of things that are possible to do. So at this time, it's my super great pleasure to introduce um, our guest panelist today. Uh, Brian knew exactly what he wanted to do and how to get there. And I believe that he's going to tell you a pretty interesting um, before and after story uh, related to Pacific Crest. So, Brian, can you hear me, sir? I, I can. How do I sound? Oh, you sound awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again uh, for joining us today. I know that it's a great blessing not only to me, but I know it's a great blessing to those who are participating on this webcast you know, it was, I'm sure they, they tolerated hearing from me some of the amazing things that you can do with Production Coach, but I know for a fact that they loved hearing it much more from actual customers. So thank you for that. Brian, oh, if I bet. could ask a favor, if you would tell us a little bit more about Pacific Crest and your role in the organization. You bet. So uh, I am the uh, Chief Operating Officer for Pacific Crest Building Supply. We are located just north of Portland, Oregon, and have about, about a 200,000 square foot manufacturing facility uh, here. We've been around for 50 years, well, 51 years this year, and uh, we produce, you know, depending on, uh, depending on the time of year, we produce close to 100,000 cabinets a year, uh, typically 20 to 25 homes a day, depending on the size. So that's every single day rolling out of here. And, um, you know, we've been doing that for a long time. We service many of the western states, and we ship daily to Washington, Idaho, Oregon, uh, Arizona. Uh, mostly, I'd say about half of our work is builder direct, uh, working with large uh, builders, uh, such as like B.R. Horton, Lennar, uh, Taylor Morris, those types of names. And then we also operate multifamily. Uh, we operate distribution and retail dealer and remodel dealer networks throughout those states as well. And so we, we try to stay pretty diverse uh, in there. So that's, that's our base here. So. That is awesome. Thank you um, very much uh, for that. Um, would you share with the uh, attendees maybe some of the symptoms that you guys were experiencing that caused you to even consider a software like Production Coach, what kind of challenges were you facing in manufacturing execution? So, so our story might be a little bit different, um, not to say that we were facing challenges, but to say that we needed something to enable growth for us, which I think might be the same thing. Um, yeah. And so, uh, so I've been with this company for about 10 years and in the cabinetry uh, world for about 20, manufacturing in general for almost 25. And, um, you know, companies evolve and grow over time. And, and this company uh, specifically is about eight times the size it was when I started. And, you know, for us, we haven't grown since implement, implementing the software, but it's giving us the tools to, uh, to get over some hurdles. And so we, of course, had, we had a lot of goals for what we wanted to do in manufacturing. And we had, in, in about every case, um, for what we were using Production Coach for, we had either analog, you know, time-consuming and possibly, you know, full of error systems, 
um, or we had software, we had digital systems, or we used spreadsheets. And so we had a lot of different things we were doing to make to make this beast work the way that we wanted it to. And so we wanted to, uh, you know, I've used a lot of industry softwares over the years and in different manufacturing. You know, I've used uh, stuff from Epicor, I've used 2020, evaluated enterprise softwares and found that for this industry, you know, Production Coach, I believe, offered the best solution to enable a lot of the automation we wanted to do. And so our big goal uh, was to get all of our data in one location so that we could really use that data on a real-time basis to cut down on the time people were spending looking for information and to automate a lot of the processes and to use the software to help us be more lean and to improve our quality control. And so I've got a lot of, a lot of examples of how we've used Production Coach in that if you'd like me to run through them. Um, on yes. There, John. Yeah, please, okay. if you would. I, I've only got to hear some little bits uh, of those. One, one in particular that I just thought was so inventive from you guys was how you are using, um, and I'm not trying to guide you on the things to say. I want this to be your words, your stuff, but, but, but I at least heard something I thought was pretty fascinating that prior to Production Coach, you guys – um, we're facing some challenges with getting the right hinges or drawer slides or whatever in the right conditions, and you used uh, advanced uh, instruction to be able to make it super simple to always get uh, that right. So, yeah, please tell us some of the exciting ways that you're using the software. Great. Yeah, so the uh, so a little bit about our, our factory floor. So we operate two shifts. Uh, we, we cut with beam saws and then filter that through our machining department into assembly. And then we have uh, two areas where, where horizontal boring takes place, and that's where the part sorting is done. And we, we sort to three assembly tables at, into three clamps and then down a final assembly line. So our, our biggest first goal with the software was to eliminate all the paperwork on the production floor. And, uh, you know, as I said, we, we produce, you know, say, let's say 20 kitchens a day on average, and we were producing nine packets of paperwork or 10 packets of paperwork for each one of those jobs for different departments. And so my estimation is that we were printing about 2,000 pieces or 2,000 spaces uh, of paper a day. And uh, since implementing Production Coach, so we're implemented from the – Start of production cutting all the way through our shipping department. We haven't done the uh, job site stuff yet, but that's next on the list. So we've, now that we're fully implemented, we've cut out about 2,000 uh, sheets of paper being printed every day and drastically reduced the amount of uh, uh, time that our employees spend looking for paper, marking stuff off, making lists, and going through that. Um, we we've, we've, have used uh, the ability to have the reports loaded right in there with the jobs for people to be able to access information. Anywhere on the production floor, they're able to uh, select an information scan, scan any part or product, and know where it should be in the production process. And so that was that was one of our biggest goals, and that happened relatively easy once we once we implemented the software. Um, another thing we wanted to automate was QC checks, both with in two different ways, with letting our employees know when something was special about a product. And so on the assembly line, this, this uh, is kind of part of the, uh, the hinging thing you mentioned there, too. So on the assembly line, we have a station that we call the ringmaster, but when something is clamped, it gets scanned, and at that scan, a product label is made, and all those parts come out of the system and become a product within the system. Using the advanced information in there, we have been able to notify that person at the clamp whether or not there's anything special about that product to where it needs special attention. This is one of many examples, but if it has file drawers, if it has, uh, you know, even down to the point to where if a specific customer has a specific request about a, about a treatment of the product, or if we've been seeing specific QC issues with that product, we can flag that within the system. And then when it's scanned there at that station, one of our solutions, we like, we like to do visual stuff uh, here. And so, uh, you know, take the guesswork out. So that station, the, the product label is printed out. The operator is notified there's something special about the product. And in our case, we decided to put a big orange cone on that product to win down the line. Now, something, you know, it seems pretty simple, but for us, that then tells everyone else in the rest of the line that they need to look at that product when it comes to them, even though they're going to scan it anyway. And so uh, specialty hardware is flagged that way. Um, uh, pull out, uh, you know, special work has to be done there. And then it goes as it goes down each station. They, uh, they, know, they know that there's something special about it. 
At the hinging station, we've used the same. So our products go down this line, and we use single point of contact so that you know, we know when it happens, we know the one place it happens in the shop. And so at the hinging station, we were having issues with uh, soft close versus non-soft close hinges being put in there. Uh, Dudley, uh, who comes and helps with the implementation, one of the gentlemen does that, has been an amazing partner and, and, and uh, instrumental in uh, helping us here. Helped us set up a way on that to where when you scan the cabinet, the screen just pops up with a colored rectangle that represents the color of the bin that the correct hinges are in. And so instead of, you know, for training purposes, like instead of an employee needing to know model numbers or needing to know information about the hardware itself, they just get a red box. They look at the red bin, that's the correct hardware to use. And, you know, we, we have ideas to expand them into a bunch of other areas as well. For the down the assembly line, when it gets to um, our, we actually, we have, we have unfortunately not value added, but value enabled station just called quality control. Uh, when they scan the product as well, anything that's been put in the system that is uh, imperative to the product being correct pops up on the screen and they know then to double check for that within there before it goes into the shipping area. We, we previously had an issue where maybe half of our uh, file drawer hangers got installed and they just slipped through on that. Well, now every time a file drawer cabinet goes through, a big warning pops up on the screen and it says, make sure the file drawer hard was in there. And then they have to clear that warning and, and they know the product is in there. Um, and so that's, there's you know, a lot of possibilities for that, but that's the way that we've utilized those special instructions to really get rid of a lot of the errors we were finding on our assembly line and to reduce a lot of the time uh, guys spend uh, or people spend on the production floor looking for the information on those special products. They can access it. As soon as they scan the cabinet, they can access the entire cut list and drawing directly through the interface. So, that's awesome. Um, I, I could go on a while. <laughs> if you want to break it up into uh, the specific questions or whatnot, but. Yeah, if you don't mind, uh, just just so we do this, you mentioned um, Dudley and implementation. So just so that everybody knows, uh, Mr. Dudley Petrie, one of our great implementers, has had a um, vast amount of experience in the wood industry, is a brilliant guy, very customer orientated, and he got to work with Brian. And so one of the fears, I think, Brian, that people have with implementing something like production coaches that it's going to take too long, it's going to be too hard. Would you mind to kind of share a little bit? I know that your project, because it was enormous, ended up being in two different um, implementations, but will you kind of help everybody understand a little bit about what that experience is like? So we have a whole team here, on, and, and like you said, our, our project was very large. Uh, I, think, I think we're around that 45 station size. You know, and we're using some stations just for info scanning purposes. Uh, we're using some just for recut purposes, which we've we've uh, I get information on that. But um, Dudley came in two different trips, and we put a lot of prep work into uh, those trips. But he was able, in both cases, to to uh, to accomplish our goals for each step. And I, my guess would be, you know, you get, you want to be ready for the implementation when they when uh, Dudley comes. But you could most likely, you know, if you were to say a five or six implement uh, station implementation like that starter package you, you discussed, um, my guess is that Dudley could be here for about two days, have every employee trained on it, and you'd be sorting and assembling parts and getting shipping done pretty effectively by the time that was done. Um, I'm not sure how to relate our implementation to a smaller one, uh, but I can say that it's it's kind of nerve wracking thinking of the idea of someone coming in and trying to help you implement a system over top of your existing uh, uh, processes, but it went very well. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of ways the system can be used and uh, it, it melts very well. It's, it's designed to work with our, with our industry and, and our manufacturing type. You know, we're not making rocket ships, we're making cabinets for the most part. And the implementation goes very smooth and, uh, I'm not sure if I answered your question you're looking for there, but uh, um, we couldn't have done it without Dudley. And uh, um, we're looking forward to having him back maybe for a third time just as we get into data mining. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Some of the big data and stuff's pretty amazing. So um, I know one of the other fears that companies have is, um, are you really going to be able to use my data? I believe if I got this correct, you guys are using Cabinet Vision. And so 
would you mind just speaking to the fact, because, you know, you talked about some pretty automated, you know, pretty amazing things, how it knew to flag, um, you know, certain products and do, you know, a number of things. And so I, I, I hope that the takeaway from this is that it's a one-time integration to your cabinet vision and a single-time setup for these rules that then just happen automatically. Would, would you speak to that, please? That is correct. Yeah, we have... We have had no issues at all getting the, the right information, the information we wanted from Cabinet Vision into the system. Um, in fact, we were able to, you know, with our team here, we've actually been able to make the imp the, uh, um, uh, the importing of the information into production code. We've got it set up so that after our guys confirm a job in Cabinet Vision and double check everything, it is actually a one button we push that implements it into the system, uh, into production coach, and then it's and then it's just in there. Uh, it's, it's very seamless, and we haven't had any issues with that. That brings up another note that uh, you know, I've, our product's been going on for quite a while just due to our on our side of it. We took a long time to pick the software, a long time to design how we wanted it to work. We actually moved stuff on our production floor to better fit the way we wanted the software to work with us even uh, to that extent. Um, but during that whole time, uh, you guys, the production coach, have actually been making improvements to the software that has made the cabinet vision integration even better than it was. It worked great initially, and it's just gotten better since we started. You know, so there's there's been continuous improvement that we've noticed, uh, you know, all around, which is a big part of our culture too. So we've appreciated that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's one thing that uh, is pretty amazing when you enter a space like this. We, uh, we we came into the U.S. market in 2016, and the software was great and was very revolutionary. Um, but we have had to pedal down on developing and improving and, and those kind of things uh, since we were uh, very blessed in 2018, the last uh, – um, IWF that was held to for production coach to win the challengers award and so it's nice to see some recognition in the industry um, by the way I know you haven't seen it yet Brian but uh, this next version coming out shortly has got some pretty amazing features that I think will be uh, will be very exciting uh, for you as well so thank you um, do you have anything else that would be uh, helpful for those attending a webcast to maybe hear about your experience um, well, we, we love the software and we're uh, very, very excited about the, the new, uh, the new features that are coming out there. Uh, one of the biggest things we've just now started using that I don't, I think you may have touched on a little bit, but, uh, but tracking issues is, uh, is turning out to be very beneficial for us. We do Pareto analysis on all of the defects and issues we have out on the shop floor. And we're finding now by using the damaged and alert systems in there that uh, we are able to actually track on a real-time basis what common QC problems are happening literally to the hour and pull that information directly out of the warning center um, and actually do real-time adjustments for issues we're seeing on the production floor. And so you add awesome. that in there. Yeah, but, uh, but no, it's a, it's a great software and uh, we're, it took us a while to pick which one we wanted. I'm glad we picked Production Coach and we're looking forward to growing with it. Um, you know, our, our our production floor is being designed right now for 300 cabinets a shift as we adjust it, and uh, I, I think that this tool is going to going to allow us to do that uh, pretty seamlessly. So, wow, love hearing great customer um, stories. So appreciate you so much. Um, you, you've you've helped me uh, open my eyes up even for some things that uh, I, it was it was really interesting to me. I I was uh, working on a project in Tampa. And um, we, were, we weren't even implemented with Production Coach. And one of the challenges that they already foresaw was that, you know, they had several hinge choices that looked very much like each other. And drawer slides that were not that different. You know, is it soft close or not or, or whatever it was. And when I got to hear um, your, your story of how you use the instructions to overcome that and really simplify uh, was amazing. They were talking about, you know, opening and closing gates and all kinds of uh, things that were going to be super expensive and, and uh, you know, a, a lot to automate. And so thank you for being innovative as well. Um, I just wanted to stop for just a moment and just uh, remind everybody in attendance that while I've been monitoring the questions section, I have not seen any questions, which usually means that I've either bored you to sleep um, Brian is giving you great information that you're thinking on or that you just uh, maybe didn't think about um, asking. 
So if you do have questions, uh, please go ahead and find that in your section and just type a little uh, quickie and um, we'll try to answer those. Question can be directed to me or Brian. He's happy to answer your direct questions as well. And so just wanted to give you that as a little bit of a, a reminder. So um, Brian, um, I wanna come out and see you guys. Uh, it sounds, uh, sounds pretty exciting. I don't know what the, uh, the largest number of um, stations um, is uh, for, for largest customer. I've been in some in the 40s and 50s uh, for sure, but definitely you're one of our larger implementations. And I really appreciated what you said um, about the new customer bundle because what you guys did w was is literally something that is very hard to pull off. We've had uh, companies that have given us feedback over time and said, yeah, well, you know what? We, we just took on more than we could handle, but it sounds like your team really knew how to think through that. For those listening on the webcast, um, don't think that you have to be a Pacific Crest to implement production coach. Uh, we also have it in uh, factories that are doing literally as little as tracking it to assembly and shipping. And uh, we've got uh, others that are, um, you know, much, much larger. So it can be, you know, probably I'd say that our smallest customer is maybe doing around $2 million a year. And then, of course, on the on the other side of it, much, much larger uh, customers. So anyway, um, one thing that I do want to also mention uh, while we're on the webcast today is at the very end of the webcast, there will be a little exit poll. And I know that nobody likes taking surveys and stuff, but if you would, there's just like three or four little quick questions and they help us to know what kind of educational information that the you guys from the industry are looking for, what we can do better within these webcasts. So if you would, please uh, be sure to fill that out. Uh, we'll definitely appreciate that. So, um, Brian, anything else that you can think of before uh, I let you go today? Um, well, I've got a few other things I could add that we've used on the functionality uh, that have been very helpful, uh, if you'd like to hear them. Uh, besides that, I'm just very excited to continue using the software and, uh, and growing with it. Yeah, you never know. It might just be one of the things that you share that is the aha moment for uh, someone. I'll tell you a quick little funny story had a company out of Kansas that I had um, you know, done a lot of software projects with and I introduced them to Production Coach and I just couldn't get any interest at all out of them. And they, um, about uh, 2016, somewhere in that range, uh, tells you several years ago, the owner of the business, they were really, really busy and it was the middle of summer and they had some employees that were out or something and jobs had to happen. And so, he, of course, went down and did one of the least technical uh, jobs, which happened to be sorting cabinets. And they didn't have a production coach system. And so after he spent a good portion of the day sorting through all of these parts, he called me on the phone and said, get that software in here. Now I understand what you've been telling me. And so you never know what that little nugget is. So please share anything you can think of that would be helpful. Okay, well, I, got, I got three things we haven't touched on yet that have been very beneficial to us. Um, you know, along with probably most of the, the manufacturers listening here, uh, being as lean and just in time as possible is important to us. And so uh, we worked for years on the best way to uh, assemble and have drawers ready for cabinets because, you know, making them, making them right on time with the cabinet can be kind of a hard thing. And so along with the, uh, the paperless, uh, goal we had, one thing was to get our the, the work in progress we had on drawers down to a minimum. And the majority of the drawers that we use these days are a nice, uh, the Baltic Birch um, nine fly plywood drawer box with a rounded over top with a nice finish on it um, that we make components for or we have strips in. And so we were able to, using the part routing information, we were able to actually put our drawer department right on our final assembly line. And they don't start making drawers now until that ringmaster station coming out of the clamps actually scans the cabinets. And then they, that new job starts, they actually can go through them, see what cabinets are coming down, and they just can access their cut list directly on the Production Coast product screen uh, as the parts are coming at them. And we've gone from having you know a whole shift worth of drawer boxes done and assembled 
down to literally just having a handful of drawer boxes at any time assembled, you know, which of course cuts down on handling, overproduction, damage, all that kind of stuff. So that was beneficial that the system allowed us to do. Uh, another one was organization for the shipping area. Um, you know, the system's designed to allow the person who is organizing the shipping area that when a product comes for a job, I think it's called staging in the system, they would typically scan scan that and assign it to a cell and then the rest of the product would be assigned to those cells. Uh, so, you know, back to the cabinet vision integration, we've been able to uh, go in and allow a checkbox in cabinet vision that tells production coach whether or not a product should be cardboard boxed or it should be spring wrapped or it should be saran wrapped or, a, you know, a, um, plastic wrapped. And that information then when at the box scanner, when no, in, in conjunction with the shipping information, we've been able to set it up so that before the cabinets make their way to the shipping department, our shipping manager can pre-assign cells for them in the system and the information. And at our final production station, when the, when the cabinet product is scanned out at the boxing machine, when they scan it, production coach tells our boxer to either cardboard box it or just wrap it or pass it through. It also prints a secondary product label at that station that tells them which shipping cell it goes into. So it takes all that thinking out of the process there as well. And so that was a very, that's, you know, number two of those three. Uh, the third one, I'll try to be quick, is uh, we have really been able to automate. Um, so you can imagine, say, say we're doing 330 cabinets today. And you said there's, there's uh, you know, say 10 parts of cabinets. So you're, say, 3,300 parts just for that day. Well, that's each day. And so, uh, you know, our production cycle due to the finishing aspect of it is typically about uh, four shifts from the time it's cut. So you can imagine each day that many parts in there. Well, so we come across a lot of parts that either go missing or need to recut. And so we've actually assigned a couple stations uh, by, next to our panel saws, one in our finishing and door ordering department that monitor the remake section. So along with tracking all the data, um, we're able to scan something. We use one of them for quality. We use, we use the warnings for quality issues, and we use the alert for reorder issues. And those guys have a reminder every certain amount of time to come in and look at it. So a lot, at the same time that we are uh, that we're doing the data analysis, the data collecting of the issues that are popping up, we're also notifying specific stations within that um, every 15 minutes or so they check them of the QC issues that they need to reorder or recut. And so recuts are automatically happening for us now. When previously it was a analog paper process and that specifically we had people walking back and forth across the production floor, you know, multiple times a day. So there's a few there's a few more benefits. We keep finding them daily. So oh, nice. Exciting, exciting. Well I I want to come out and uh, see this with my own eyes. Maybe we can do a factory tour or something and uh, make that a good thing. Um, I did I did get a question pop up, and I'm, I'm sorry this is something that I didn't make obvious earlier. Um, Brian has mentioned that they're integrated with Cabinet Vision. We've also built um, integrations for the most popular um, software solutions here in the U.S. Uh, with uh, Microvellum. Of course, we've talked about Cabinet Vision. We've done it with Emos. We've done it with Mosaic. But... Another beautiful thing is we have also created a very customizable import that just utilizes CSV or XLS. So that means that no matter what your data source is, as long as you can spit out for us a parts list that can give us you know, information to know about what parts and what assemblies, then we can connect literally to anything. And so what I typically do when someone has a software other than those that we've built the core import functionality is I provide them over a sample of the uh, XLS or CSV import so they can then determine uh, what they need to do on their side to be able to populate their data to a spreadsheet. So don't worry, we'll be glad to uh, help you figure that stuff out for sure. Um, I do recognize that there are um, you know, more solutions that, that uh, require connection to. Uh, we just made the decision to do those deep level integrations with, you know, where the biggest market share was, and then to utilize um, the CSV or XLS import for others. The only thing that we're missing um, as a result of those that, that Brian gets, uh, because he's got one of the mainstream, is that he gets to see a 3D visualization of what's being built, and he could also scan a part 
label and see the machining details of a part. Those are the two things that you don't get from the XLS or CSV import, but otherwise the system just works wonderfully. And we have a lot of customers that are using that import as well. So it can be very good. By the way, um, might also mention that also not all of your production data has to come from Cabinet Vision. I don't know about in Brian's case, but um, you know maybe they've got uh, corbels or moldings or those kind of things can be easily added or merged into the work order that came from Cabinet Vision. So there's a lot, a lot of flexibility for that for sure. So I know that we're out of time for today. I want to, first of all, thank you again, Brian, for spending your time and wisdom and all that stuff for us. I really appreciate it. And I also want to thank everyone that attended today. Um, it's exciting to me when I see people working on their business instead of just in their business, coming to learn something new and to understand what's possible to happen. I'll leave you with this. I have yet to speak to a customer of Production Coach that did not claim that they had a full return on investment in less than six months. So it can do some amazing things like what you've heard Brian describe for your factory. So anyway, please take the exit poll um, as uh, we're getting off of the uh, webcast that will help us do a better job for you in the future or other people that choose to do that. You can learn a lot more information at our website at rsasolutions.com. We're happy to help uh, reach out anytime. I want to thank everybody one last time and uh, wish you a great day. Take care and God bless.